Okay, uh, getting we started here. So this is the the broad process for uh, you know, production order based manufacturing. So we're looking at the cycle from the first step to the last. So the first step, of course, is some sort of an order request, you know, ju just like the common SAP process of having something preliminary, then an order, and so on. Right. So order request could be, for example. A planned order okay so that it's something like that okay and then of course you go and actually create the order which is the second step and then uh, before you can release the order you want to make sure that all the things needed for the order are available okay that's what the availability check is uh, so for example uh, you created the order and at that time you might have created certain reservations for materials to do the order, right? But before you actually go and start releasing the order, you want to make sure that those materials and things like that are available at that point in time before you release the order. Because otherwise you might release the order, they could start work and find that material is not available. Okay, so that's the idea of availability check. You do that. Uh, and then uh, do a machine reservation for the order, capacities, machine reservation being reserve capacities, and then release the order. Okay, once you've done all of that, you could release the order and uh, optional step would be to download uh, to the PDC system, you know, some kind of automated production, computer aided manufacturing kind of system. So there might be some information to be downloaded to that. Uh, you might want to print the order optionally. Uh, and then material staging, before you start work on the order, pick up all the raw materials, uh, prepare them and so on for work. Okay, so after that, once the material staging is done, you post, you know, they'll be posting the material withdrawal, right? The material is actually withdrawn from the inventory for this order, right? And then um, you can do that. And then uh, it could be optionally that uh, at this point, we're assuming that material is withdrawn and some work is taking place here, the actual production process. Outside of the SAP system, the actual manufacturing is taking place. Right, and then it's possible that you might get some. This is also an optional process, just like this. It's possible that you might get some automated information being sent to the SAP system from computer-aided manufacturing and other kinds of systems, right? Because manufacturing is done, and then automate autom automatically it may update the system, or more likely there's an order confirmation. It's just like uh, confirmation of any activity in SAP. So you've got the order confirmation that takes place. And then there are other processes. You know, once you've got the order confirmation, you're going to do, uh, you know, a work in process uh, determination, the cost accounting purposes, and then the goods receipt into the warehouse. We do that, uh, and then there could be variation uh, variance calculations. So, for example, your planned cost for the order was X, your actual co uh, cost for this order was Y, right? So there's a variance, and then some sorts of analysis about the variance. And then there's order settlement, which is settling the costs of this order. The order incurred a lot of costs, so we settle the costs to whatever. We'll see a little more detail on this shortly. Right. So this is the whole process uh, in general, and it's a more detailed explanation of the process than the very rudimentary explanation that I gave right in the beginning. Right. We see more steps and more detail, but this is the broad flow. Okay. Now some of the steps here, which are marked with a one. Right, availability checks, order release, order printing, material withdrawal posting, and so on. Some of these steps can be automated. Okay, some of these steps can be automated. Uh, for example, one common example of material withdrawal posting being automated is what is called the back flush mechanism. Okay, that is, um, see, it's one thing to say you need a material. Every time you need a material, you'll actually go and issue it and then use it. Right, which you know, which could make the process a little more cumbersome. On the other hand, in some manufacturing processes, they keep the material on the floor. Right. Later on, they'll see how much is, of the material has been consumed, and automatically post a material withdrawal for the amount that has been consumed. Okay. So that's an automated way of posting material issues. So, for example, 
Well, let's say you you're making cars, and twenty cars rolled out of the line. Right. So you know eighty tires have been consumed. Right. So the eighty tires were not issued up front, but when once you record the fact that twenty cars have been completed, you post the goods issue for eighty tires. Okay. Retrospectively, based on uh, consumption that you infer. So that is one kind of approach. So that is why we say material withdrawal posting. Some of the materials can be automated, right? Based on stock itself, what is consumed, you say, okay, this much material was withdrawn for this. Okay. So that's the broad process. And then all of these, some of these processes that we have said here: settlement, various calculation, uh, work in progress determination, and so on. Usually, those would be periodic operations, right? They won't be done immediately. Uh, at the time of order completion, but that could be done periodically on a time basis, and we'll talk about cost object controlling shortly as well. Okay, so this is the broad process of manufacturing. What happened? Okay, now creation of production orders. You've got a lot of options. The most common option, of course, is what we see here. This option, right? You run MRP. You get a planned order convert to a production order and then you run it okay but it's possible that you can create an order just like that manually create an order and it's possible that the order has no routing no bomb but you still create a production order okay some some simple activities or one off kind of things that you need to make you might do that right or you may create an order with the routing select some operations but no specific materials specified for that order. Right? These would be obviously uh, exceptional kind of scenarios. Or you might manually create a, an order with a routing and a bomb. Okay, this is the opposite. The, the you know here you get a, a, a an order with a bomb and a routing, but this in this case it was probably created by MRP. Right, MRP found out uh, for this material you need to plan and then created a planned order and of course the corresponding bomb and routing are there okay so this is it but here you might do the same thing manually okay so you've got all of these options but by and large this is the most predominant approach that you'll be encountering <coughs> okay the operations materials and the prt will be usually picked up from the bomb for the production order um, you can also enter some data manually, of course, as always. Um, by default, the bomb will not be readed when planned order is converted to a production order. Right? See, at the time the planned order was created, the bomb was all read and some of the values were copied into the order. But when it's converted into a production order, right, the bomb is not readed. Right? So if there's any bomb changes, then you will have to recreate the planned order. Which makes sense because if the bomb has changed, then you probably need to run MRP again itself, right? So there's no sense in just going changing the bomb and trying to run it with this. Things may not be right. Okay, so that's why the bomb is not reread when uh, planned order is converted into a production order. And this we've already seen. We can specify the allocation of bomb items to operations, but if the allocation is not specified, then it's assumed that all of these items are needed the first operation. Okay, so this we have seen several times when we talked about routing and the connection to bomb. Okay, here are the, here is the various elements of the production order. So you've got the order header, which has got the order number, plant, production scheduler, the scheduler who is responsible for this order. And of course, at least one operation is required for a production order. There's no sense in having a production order with no operation. So at least one is required. Now you might alternate, uh, optionally allocate materials to the operations we are talking about. You can optionally allocate material components, PRTs, to operations. But you can also allocate what are called as trigger points to operations. That is, you can say when a certain operation is complete, then you may want to trigger a certain procedure. Okay, some internal SAP procedure that trigger point is you know it goes along with certain functions that you'll be writing. 
Okay, so that's the way of extending the functionality of the system. So you could optionally assign trigger points as well to operations. So you could do that. And of course, confirmations are later entered against, you know, possibly against operations. We'll see there are options there too, right? But they're all contained as part of the production order. Okay, uh, so those are the details that you're seeing here. Um, then you see on the top the settlement rule and the costs. Okay, so here, um, okay, I mean, if the the routing concerned routing has uh, multiple sequences, then you you could select the appropriate sequence. Remember, we said the routing could have multiple alternate sequences. So this is just saying which particular sequence we want to use. You're selecting. So those two things are required in the production order if you're using order related cost object controlling. Right. In other words, if you want to do cost accounting at the level of the order, then we may, those two things are needed because then you'll have to settle the cost of the order. But it's possible that you might be using uh, other approaches to settlement, for example, product related settlement and so on, which, in which case those two things won't be part of the production order. Okay, so that's pretty much uh, what is here. Uh, costs are determined at operation level. Right? In, that is, individual operations are costed. That makes sense because um, much of the costs will be coming from the work centers and it is the operations that are connected to the work centers. Right? So in order to calculate the total cost of the order, it makes sense that costs are determined and managed, uh, determined at the operation level, but they're managed at the header level, meaning the total cost is calculated at the header level and any allocations and so on are done at that level. Okay, so that's uh, the idea here. So uh, order control, I mean, much of what happens to an order is controlled by the status of the order. Okay, so an important status of the order is when you release the order, right? So long as you don't release the order, then nothing much is happening. But when you release the order, you're actually putting it into motion. So a lot of things can happen at that point. Okay, so here you see the small timeline You've got the order on the left hand side, header, operations, material components, tools, etc. And then you've got the cost, which is the planned, target, actual, etc. You've got those. So you create the order. Uh, then, of course, the order gets scheduled. Uh, you create, uh, you figure out machines that are needed for the order, perhaps do material reservations for the order. Right? So you do all of those initial things. And then just prior to order release, you perform an availability check for everything that is needed for this order. Do I have the material? Do I have the work center capacities, etc. Right. Once you've confirmed that everything is available, you can then release the order. Right. Prior to that, there's no sense in releasing the order because all the resources are not available. So once the order is released, you can then do a host of things. That's right. With, with the material reservation, you're just highlighting what materials are needed. Not going up and seeing. No, those, if you look at the stock requirements list, right. you'll see that they're reserved for this order. That's what I'm saying. You're just actually seeing what materials are needed for this order, and then you're going to see if there's a bit of availability. Right, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, one question. Just to review the time between this and MRP, this is the same order that's created from your planned order in MRP. Right. Now, is MRP carrying out the rest of these other functions or when it hand, gets handed over to the manufacturing module is when it now, these other things like checking on the production um, work centers and all that is handled in the manufacturing module? Right, right. MRP has stopped with the creation of the planned order. Okay. So order release happens in manufacturing. Manufacturing. MRP. Definitely, definitely in manufacturing. MRP is stopped with planned order, that's it. Okay. So you choose whether to convert to a production order or not. That's also happening in manufacturing. Okay. So conversion to production order and then subsequent processing is all happening in manufacturing execution. Okay, not in MRP. Okay, uh, so once you release the order, a lot of things become possible. None of these things is possible before an order is released. Right, so for example, you cannot print even the you know documents with which you can do the order 
uh, or withdraw materials against the order and of course carry out the actual work because if you don't have the materials you can't do the actual work and clearly of course unless the order has been released you can't enter confirmations or you know send the finished goods back into a warehouse and then of course settle the order okay so all of these things are controlled by the status released of the order so that's an important uh, point it's it's an important point let's say in the life cycle of an order okay and pro that's what i was trying to say here production orders are managed through statuses and a very important status is the status of being released uh, the availability check can be automated right so for example at the time you uh, convert a planned order into a production order you may say do the availability check and the system may do the availability check and immediately show you the results of that check everything is good or some things are missing and so on okay so that's possible uh, you know uh, to automate another important thing is while it's common that you will release the whole order that's a common practice but it's also possible to release individual operations right that means that let's say I released operation 10 not everything I didn't release all the operations so if I released operation 10 then people can withdraw materials only that are needed for that operation okay confirmation can only be entered for that operation and so on okay so that's important to know that it's possible that release can be at the whole order level or at individual operation level and of course it's also possible to have mass release of orders uh, and so on. <coughs> so if you release an, uh, an, an individual operation, mm -hmm. how does the order gets marked? Mark? Does it mean work in progress at that point? Meaning what is the status of the order? Of the order, yeah. Uh, they must have a partial release status or something. Okay. Yeah. Any idea what the status of an order is when you've released only an operation? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. It, it should be something. Yeah. It, so what would you say the order can be released, the order release can be at the order level or the individual level? Individual operation level. So you don't, you may not release the whole order. Right. You may release, say I'm releasing only operation 10. In which case only things related to that can be done subsequently, not everything. Right, and one of the important things is the materials. You can only withdraw materials for operation 10 because only that has been released. You can only enter confirmation for operation 10. Clearly, doesn't make sense to really, uh, you know enter confirmation for other things. Okay. Yeah, they must have some other intermediate status of uh, you know between not released and fully released. Okay. Uh, so here for availability uh, checks for materials and so on, right? So there are two points you know at which availability check can be performed. One is at the time of order creation you might perform availability checks right and second is just prior to releasing the order you may perform availability checks okay so that is controlled depending on how you set up the system it's conceivable that you may perform availability checks at both points okay that's perfectly possible there's no thing. Okay, so we're checking for materials we're checking for machine availability and this is just showing you the lifeline of the order so at this time it's been released and other activities are going on. Okay. Now they say inspection results, it looks like quality control, but not really. What we are talking about when they say inspection results is the results of your availability check. Okay. It's slightly misleading when they say inspection results. So uh, as a result of avail availability check, you can get information on you know confirmed quantities and capacities, and of course a list of any missing items. Right. And uh, they have several statuses that determine what is it. So when items are missing or you need additional items, what, what are the action steps? You'll need? have to make sure that they're available so before you... The MRP again? To, to request those materials or not? Or you may not be you know, to run the whole MRP because MRP is quite a big process, right? Yeah. So you'll just try to follow up with the materials people to see what's going on with that material. It should have been available. Why is it not available? When is it likely to come, etc.? Wait for it, monitor it, and then release the order. Okay, so that's the general idea here. Okay, so it's going to give you the results here. So when they say inspection results, it's really results of availability check, not quality control. So 
So there's just one question on that. Does it also go, um, can it, does it monitor just what's in stock or does it also monitor? Um, no, now it has, it has to be in stock. Yeah, because, but remember with, with orders, we talked about, you, if you think, if you realize your oper operation takes a month, but you need it halfway through, is it able to monitor schedule delivery or so that even if it's not in stock, it shows the schedule delivery? <coughs> Uh, here, you're going to release the order. You're going to start working on it, right? Yeah, no. Material has to be in stock. No, but remember, we said materials. You can schedule for the material to be available when it is needed. Right. So if it's needed halfway through the manufacturing process, if you're building a car, you don't right, need right, right. screen until. So does it check as part of the availability? Does it check um, not just what's in stock, but what has been released for orders and is scheduled to come in? Mm. I, the report will contain that information. You know, it will probably say it's not available now, right? But expected availability date is this. Okay, so then you can decide whether you can want to start the order or not. Because, like you say, it's it's very possible. It's a very valid point that you make. You release the order. The entire order is released. So when you're doing availability check, you're performing it for operations 10, 20, 30, 40. But materials only for 10 may be available now, right? Because for 30, like you said. It's planned to arrive later, right? So uh, the results of the availability check will give you that information. They may say this part is missing, but expected to come in at a future date. Yeah. Uh, the book says check instructions yeah. for the uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, leave. Yes. Okay. Uh, for past your question just now, uh, say you have already placed a order to buy some raw material, right? And they are on the way to you, but maybe you have not received it yet, right? Mm -hmm. This depends on the availability check rule. So for the availability check rule, you need to select what kind of special stock you want to consider in your availability check. So uh, if you only want to consider your on-hand inventory, then you do not really select all the remaining special stock. But if you want to consider, say, WIP on the way to you, then you select that one as a special stop, then when they check the availability, it will consider that. If you want to consider, say, safety stop also, then in SAP system, you have a nice checkbox, safety stop. Yeah. So everything upon your selection, in your configuration. So um, basically, if you select what kind, what kind of stops, then the system will consider mm -hmm. that kind of stop. Yeah, that's a good point. Right. Yeah, it, so, it, it, yeah, it, it can, so in, in transit, right? Yeah, it can consider that. It's an option. That's yet another option. Yeah, that's a good point. That you can select exactly how we does the availability check. What is the check instruction in the book? It says check instructions control the availability check. Right. So which is what, what, what points to do the availability check? Uh, time one and time two. Time one, time two. That's what it is. Okay. Okay, so once you've, uh, the order has been released or an 